Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to my talk. Um, I will give an introduction today uh, to ACA persistence and eventuate. This talk is more um, um, a tool comparison. I'm not going into uh, the basics of um, CQRS and event sourcing. I, I will briefly mention them, but it's, the talk is mainly a tool comparison. Um, ACA Persistence and Eventuate are both CQS um, and event sourcing tools. They have more or less similar API or programming model, but make different distributed system compromises. Okay, a few words about the history. Um, ACA Persistence emerged from uh, an early predecessor called Event Sourced. Uh, event sourced was developed by Ligotech. This was a um, library um, that had the main goal to, to, to persist um, uh, actor state via, um, so primarily via command sourcing. And in 2013, with a um, discussion with TypeSafe, how we can include event sourced uh, into the ACA project. And from that point on, so from, from summer 2013, <laughs> Um, there was a complete rewrite of the event source library and um, the result was ACA persistence. Today, when I talk about ACA persistence, I do not only mean the core ACA persistence module, but also the new ACA persistence query module. So I don't make a um, distinction here uh, for the discussion. Yeah. And ACA Persistence is now mainly developed by TypeSafe, but there are also many external contributions uh, to um, ACA Persistence. Eventually, it is a rather new project. It started in January 2015 and is mainly developed by the Red Bull Media House. It's again a complete rewrite of ACA Persistence. There are two main reasons for it. The first reason is um, we wanted to additionally support global distribution. And we wanted to support um, event collaboration. I uh, will come to that in more detail later. Okay. So what are the um, um, similarities between these tools? Regarding the basic uh, basis technologies, they are both written in Scala. They are based on ACA actors. They are based on ACA streams. And you can choose from different storage backends to store events. When you take a closer look at an ACA actor, its mailbox is non-durable and the internal state maintained by an ACA actor is transient. So this means when an ACA actor is restarted, the internal state is usually lost. And when the actor is stopped or when a JVM crashes, then also the messages in an actor's mailbox are um, lost as well. And one of the main goals of ACA persistence and eventuate is to persist actor state via event sourcing. So what is event sourcing? Very briefly on a very high level, event sourcing captures all changes to application state, or in this case actor state, as a sequence of events. These events are stored in an event log in an append-only fashion. And to recover application state or um, uh, actor state, the events are replayed to the actor. So that's, that's the basic idea behind event sourcing. Event sourcing also distinguishes commands from events. Events itself are immutable facts that an application has to deal with. So you cannot change them later. And they are persistent. Um, in contrast, commands uh, represent actions that can fail and they can be retried by, um, by command senders. I will show examples later. So in order to make a plain ACA actor an event sourced actor, it is useful to define its behavior in terms of a command handler and an event handler. I'm using this graphical representation to um, uh, 
to show any event sourced actor. So, so how does an event sourced actor process commands? Commands are external messages that are received by an event sourced actor's command handler. And when receiving a command, the first thing the command handler does is it validates the command. So it validates the command either by inspecting the command message or by validating the command um, against internal state. And if when validation succeeds, it derives one or more events from that command and stores these events in the event log. And when events have been successfully stored or persisted in the event log, it calls the event handler with the persisted events. And the event handler now contains logic how to update internal state from the persistent events. So when the event handler is invoked, internal state is updated. And after invoking the event handler, the command handler can interact with its uh, environment. It can send other messages to collaborators, or like in this case here, it sends a reply message to the command sender. During state recovery, events are replayed from the event log um, to the event handler directly, and the same logic for updating internal state is executed so that only internal state is updated without executing um, external side effects. That's very important. So during state recovery or during event replay, only internal state um, uh, is recovered without having side effects. So ACA persistence and eventuate additionally separate command processing from query processing. This is known as um, CQRS. That's an abbreviation for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. And it just means that one should use different data models for command processing and query processing, mainly because they need different optimizations. And um, the data or domain model used for command processing is usually called a write model, and the um, data models um, used for query processing are, are called read models. CQRS um, can be well combined with event sourcing. And if event sourcing is combined with CQRS, model updates, uh, both on the command side and on the query side, are made via events only. So the command side generates events and updates the write model via events. And these events are propagated um, to the query side where the read models are updated for query processing. That's the main idea behind um, the um, combination of CQS and event sourcing. So what are the main abstractions provided by ACA persistence and um, eventuate? By ACA persistence, on the command side, it's the persistent actor, <coughs> and, on the, uh, um, and um, in eventuate, it's the event sourced actor. So, and they, they work um, like um, explained previously on the command processing slide. So they, they, they work in a very similar way. Both are event source, they just have different names. So, so in, in eventually it's called event source actor. In ACA persistent, it's called persistent actor, but their, their inner working is, um, is very similar. On the query side, in ACA persistence, it's the persistent view. Um, persistent view uh, is meanwhile deprecated in ACA 2.4 and has, and has been replaced by and uh, ACA Streams API. Um, uh, in, in any case, these APIs or the, the, these abstractions are mainly used to read events uh, or, or to aggregate events from um, event logs. It, they, they do not influence how applications use um, these events to do uh, create read models or to store read models in, in, in a query database that um, ACA persistence um, and eventually don't, don't make uh, prescriptions uh, on the query side. 
in eventuate, um, the main abstraction at the moment is the event sourced view that's more or less equivalent to the um, uh, persistent view in um, Akka Persistence. And an event sourced view is mainly used to generate um, read models in memory. And um, two other abstractions that are currently uh, work in progress are the event source processor and also an Akka Streams API. An event source processor is an abstraction to um, generate uh, persistent um, um, read models. So to generate read models in, a, um, in the query database. So um, it, it provides uh, facilities to, to um, to, to recover from failures, to make batch updates to the query database and so on. I, I will not go into the details here. That's work in progress and will be part of the next release. So to give an um, impression um, how similar the API or the, the, the programming model is um, between a persistent actor in a in Akka Persistence and event sourced act and eventuate. I have a very simple code example here. So that's a simple persistent counter. I'm, I'm, I'm not going in, in, into the details here, just want to give an um, um, imp, 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 impression. Uh, that's the only co code example I have. So um, an, in both cases, we have a command message defined, um, an increment message, and an incremented event. And um, both the persistent actor on the left side and uh, the event source actor on the uh, right side have internal state. In uh, this case, that's an integer variable representing the um, uh, persistent counter. Both also have a command handler. So the command handler processes the increment command messages. In this case, there's no validation. Uh, in this case, there's um, an immediate derivation of an incremented event, which is persisted to the event log. And after successful persistent, um, the event handler is called. In Akka persistence, the event handler um, is receive recover. Uh, and the name of the event handler in eventuate is on event. So and after having called the event handler, both reply to the command sender that uh, event persistent was successful. If not, then um, uh, a failure message is returned. Um, in the command handler, you can also save snapshots of um, internal state. So uh, snapshots are not required for event sourcing, but are an important optimization to reduce recovery time. So for example, when you have millions of um, events um, that, that make up the, the internal state of an event sourced or persistent actor, it might take a pretty long time uh, to, to replay these events. And you, you, you can reduce this time by, by taking snapshots. And um, in Akka Persistence, you uh, call a safe snapshot method to save snapshots in eventual charts called safe. Both also have an event handler. In eventual, it's called on event. It processes the incremented events and updates internal state. The same is done um, on, um, in, in Akka Persistence. Here, the event handler is called receive recover. So both also have a snapshot handler, which is called um, during uh, at the beginning of recovery if a snapshot is available. So that's um, the event source or persistent actor can initialize its internal state from the saved snapshot. So as you can see, the API, API is more or less similar. OK, now to the differences. On a very high level, event sourced actors in Akka persistence choose consistency and partition tolerance from a cap, whereas those in eventuate choose availability and partition tolerance. 
a little bit more, uh, more detailed, actually aqua persistence and eventuate both support the same consistency model, so both support strong consistency per uh, persistent actor on the command side, but eventually, uh, eventuate additionally supports relaxation to causal consistency. And this relaxation is needed to make event sourced actors highly available and partition tolerant. Okay, so what, uh, what, what does that mean? Um, ACA persistence enforces strong consistency on the command side by requiring applications um, to operate persistent actors as global singletons. If an application fails to operate a persistent actor as a singleton, so if it by accident um, creates two inst instances of a persistent actor with the same persistent ID, they can destroy um, uh, um, each other's state, so they can override their events. This, this, this depends on the storage plugin, of course, but um, it, it usually um, will result in, in corrupt application state. Um, Consequently, you cannot have actor, uh, persistent actor replication and um, uh, um, state replication of persistent actors. On the other hand, event sourced actors can be replicated and state replication is done via reliable asynchronous event replication and the replication of events um, is across so-called locations. You can think of locations um, as availability zones, for example. So I've, I've made an illustration here. Um, we are here, there are three locations, and we create um, application state here at location A via event sourcing. So this, 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 this application state is event sourced. In order to replicate this application state to other locations, the underlying, the saved events are asynchronously replicated to other locations, sourced there as well, so the application state is recreated there. And during command processing, let's say we make an update at location A, um, the command is processed um, by, by an event source actor, events are generated, are sourced again, and we have a state update here, and again, these events are replicated to other locations, so we propagate the change to other locations as well. And um, an important property of Eventuate is that the replicas are writable at all locations, so it, um, uh, Eventuate follows a multi-master approach, and these locations even remain writable during uh, partitions. So if um, a location is isolated from, from uh, other locations, you can still uh, uh, write to these locations. So writing to a location uh, doesn't uh, need to be coordinated with other locations. <clears throat> this has a consequence. Uh, and the consequence is that you can have write conflicts. So for example, when you make updates um, uh, during a partition uh, to different locations, let's say to the same domain object, um, then you will probably have a write conflict. So, and you cannot have um, these conflicts only during a partition, but also if you uh, make concurrent updates at different locations. So it's important that you have um, means to detect these um, um, conflicts, these concurrent rights, to track these conflicts, and um, also to have means to resolve these conflicts. And eventually, it provides means to um, automatically resolve uh, right conflicts, for example, with CRDDs, but you can also define custom logic for automated conflict resolution, but also provides means to um, for interactive conflict resolution. I've made a, another illustration. So here we have um, uh, um, a partition, location C is partitioned from lo location A and B. When we make an update to location A, that's propagated to location B, but not to location C. And here, let's say we make um, another update at location C. 
which is in conflict with um, the other updates. So when the partition heals, um, events are exchanged uh, between the locations and we end up in a conflict. So with automated conflict resolution, this would uh, resolve immediately um, to, um, to, to, to some state that um, is the successor of, of, of these conflicts. In case of uh, interactive conflict uh, resolution, this is usually done at a single location. So here uh, we have a client that is reading the conflicting states, the X and Y, merges them to, to a new value and makes an update um, with a special conflict resolution event, which is sourced at location A, propagated to other locations, and so the, the interactive conflict resolution is propagated to the other locations. So, um, a typically eventuate application is um, uh, operated in a way that you have strong consistency within a location. So, within a single location, you, you use eventuate in a, um, a very similar way as you use an archive persistence um, application. So, um, for your write models, you, you, you have your dedicated um, event sourced actors. Um, and um, they operated as singletons um, in, in, in this location. So in this way, you, you can achieve strong consistency. But you only have causal consistency um, across, the loca uh, across locations, and causality is tracked with uh, vector clocks um, in Eventuate. So we track potential causality here. I want to show the importance of causal consistency based on an uh, example. This example is a distributed chat application, and I'm showing this by contrasting two forms of reliable broadcast. One is um, first in, first out uh, reliable broadcast, um, which leads to certain anomalies, or can lead to certain anomalies, and the second one is the causal reliable broadcast. This example is, was inspired by the um, article don't, uh, don't Settle for Eventual Consistency. And in this example, we use three different locations. In this case, uh, three different data centers. So with a reliable broadcast, an update at one data center is reliably propagated to other data centers, and the order of updates in one data center is preserved in, in, in the other data centers. So um, that, that, that's the first in, first out property. Okay, in this example chat application, we have Alice um, entering the chat room um, at data center one, typing in, I have lost my wedding ring. This is propagated to um, the other data centers. Okay, 10 minutes later, Alice types in another message. No problem, I have found my wedding uh, ring again. This is propagated to data center two, but for some reason, the message um, is lost um, uh, while being uh, sent to data center three. This will be retried later. Meanwhile, Bob enters the chat room at data center two, is reading the two messages of Alice and replies to her, okay, I'm glad to hear that, that you found your wedding ring. That's propagated um, back to data center one, so Alice can see the reply here. And it's also propagated to data center three. And um, a person that is entering the chat room in data center three might think that Bob is not very polite, but that's not the actual problem here. So um, the actual problem is that we have a causality violation here. Causal consistency means that you must never observe um, an effect before its actual cause. But um, in this case, we have actually done that. So the effect is that, that we observe is Bob's message. And Bob's message was caused by, uh, by, by the second message of Alice that she, um, uh, that, that, that she found. Uh, the wedding ring again. So we have a causality violation here. And, um, the, um, and the situation of 
causality violation becomes more obvious when the message is read right and, and um, sorted after uh, Bob's message. So how can this problem be solved with um, uh, a causal reliable broadcast? We are going to make causality checks now. And this causality check um, um, is something, so, so in this causality check, data center one tries to find out if data center two has seen a message from data center three that data center one has not seen yet. So the answer is no. And the important thing with, the, with this causality check is that it can be made locally. Data center one does not need to communicate with the other data centers to find, uh, to find out if causal dependencies are missing here. And uh, this is possible by um, inspecting the vector timestamps. So as I said previously, um, the, um, causality is tracked with vector clocks and um, um, and these vector clocks are used to attach vector timestamps to the, to the individual uh, messages. But just comparing the, the vector timestamp of an update with the local vector clock, you can find out uh, if a, de a dependency is missing or not. Okay, so here the causality check passes and um, the message can be added here. The same is now made at data center three. So data center three um, tries to find out if data center two has um, uh, seen a message from data center one that data center three has not seen yet, and the answer here is yes. So this means a, dip, uh, a causal dependency is missing, uh, which means um, it, um, the, the chat application cannot add this message immediately to the timeline uh, in the chat room, but has to buffer it. And later when data center one retries sending the message, the causality check passes, it can be added to the timeline, and finally, the causality check also passes for the buffered message. And we end up with a causal reordering of the message um, and uh, have a result that we intuitively expect um, uh, to be correct. So that, that's, that's um, the, the importance of um, uh, causal consistency in, in a chat application. And causal consistency is exactly the guarantees that uh, Eventuate can, uh, can give you if your application is um, distributed or replicated um, ac across several locations or data centers, for example. So with causal consistency, causally related events are delivered in the same order at all locations. This is the, 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 um, um, whereas concurrent events can be delivered in any order um, uh, at, um, at different locations. So you don't have a global total order. Um, the total order can differ, but the causal order is, is the same at all locations. So let's take a closer look at the event logs of our cup assistance and um, eventuate. In eventuate, every location um, has a local representation of an event log. Of course, you can have several event logs um, uh, in eventuate, like, uh, like in Aka Persistence, but I'm show, showing only one here. And these local representations are um, called uh, local event logs, and they can be connected to uh, a replicated event log um, via so-called replication endpoints and um, event replication between these replication endpoints is uh, asynchronous, as already mentioned. Um, Eventuate at the moment supports two different storage backends depending on the durability guarantees you need. So if you uh, need st stronger durability guarantees, you will probably choose a Cassandra storage backend where you have redundant storage of events within the location. But it's, it's important um, to say here that um, um, the, the storage backend is not used to, um, to uh, replicate events across locations. So here, let's say location A and location B both uh, store their events um, um, in, in, in a Cassandra cluster. 
in, in this case, location A um, and location B uh, have their own Cassandra cluster. The asynchronous event replication between locations, that's an eventual specific mechanism. And um, what and uh, eventually it also allows you to, to, to have different storage backends at different locations. So for example, larger locations representing um, a big data center will probably use Cassandra as a storage backend. But if you um, use smaller locations, which can even be a, a mobile um, device, for example, um, can use LevelDB or, or another storage backend, which is not yet supported, but will be. Um, as uh, storage backend. So, and in a local event log, the um, storage order is, is always consistent with causal order. And more formally, um, uh, we can say when we have a potential uh, causal relation, um, which is the, 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 the happens before relation uh, are tracked by vector clocks, a local event lock is always a valid linear extension of this uh, potential causal relation. So um, this, 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 this uh, causality relation or the partial order can have um, many different linear extensions and, and the local event lock is always one of these many um, different, uh, different linear extensions. So in other words, we have the same causal event storage order at each location, but we have a different total event storage order um, uh, at different locations. These are the basic properties of a replicated event log in eventuate. Okay, when we take a look at ACA persistence in context of um, locations, we can only discuss ACA persistence in context of a single location because it does not provide uh, something like um, um, uh, um, re replication, so asynchronous replication to, 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 to multiple locations for um, concurrent updates. Um, ACA persistence um, provides many more possible storage backends uh, than eventually does at the moment. Um, so it also provides LevelDB and Cassandra storage backends, but also storage backends for um, event store, MongoDB, Kafka, and, and, and many more. The main reason is ACA Persistence provides a storage plugin API, and um, most storage backends are um, uh, community contributions. And the, the, the only storage backend um, delivered with ACA Persistence itself is the LevelDB storage backend. Okay. So, another thing I want to uh, discuss is um, event collaboration. In a logical view on event logs in ACA persistence is this. Um, each persistent actor has its private event log for writing. So the, um, in ACA persistence you cannot share event logs for writing, but you, you can only share it for reading. Um, that's not a physical view. So, um, 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 the, for example, when you take the Cassandra storage backends, they, um, uh, all the logical logs, uh, logs can be written to the, um, uh, to, the, to the same table, for example. But um, from um, a conceptual view, every persistent actor has its own private event log. Um, the situa situation is very different in eventuate. In eventuate, event logs can be shared for writing. So multiple event source actors can write to the same event log and they can also consume events that have been written by other event source actors to the same um, uh, local event log. So for example, an event source actor that's, uh, that emits an event E1 um, can be consumed by another event source actor. And the, the rules, um, how events are routed from one event source actor to, to other event source actors um, 
um, are configurable and you have an API for that. So for example, you can say, okay, an event emitted um, to the event log um, shall be routed to, to all other events of the actors or you can um, have a topic-based routing or based on aggregate ID. I'm not going um, into the details here. That's uh, all, um, um, the, all the details are in the documentation. And uh, event routing does not only work in context um, of a single local event log, in context of a single location, but is, um, uh, works across locations. So an event that is uh, emitted by an event source actor at location A is replicated to location B and can be consumed by an event source actor there. And this is the basis for um, uh, something we call um, event collaboration in um, uh, Eventuate. We have already seen a special case of event collaboration, which is uh, state replication. So in, um, for state replication, you have different events or actors of the same type that exchange each other's events for replicating state. And that's just a special case of service interaction. So uh, service interaction could mean you have event sourced actors of different type that exchange events uh, to um, um, achieve a common goal. Uh, I made an illustration here. Here we have three different services, S1, S2, and S3. Service 1 um, is replicated uh, across location A and B, and Service 2 and Service 3, these are, um, these are singletons in this example. So when Service 1 emits an event, it's not only consumed by uh, its, 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 its replica, it's, it's, it can also be consumed by the other services. And in this example, um, as reaction on uh, consuming event one, service three emits another event that is only consumed by S2 and so on. And so, so you can implement um, different workflows um, for, um, to, to, to make um, services, small services um, collaborate. So you can use this, for example, to implement reliable, distributed, and uh, partition-tolerant uh, business processes, or more generally, to uh, implement event-driven uh, service architectures. And um, the properties of event collaboration in Eventuate are not only reliable event delivery, um, the services can also rely that they receive all events in, pro, uh, in, in, in proper ca causal order. So these services will never observe an effect before its cause. And by reading from the replicated event log, they also have the guarantee that they will never um, um, uh, read a duplicate. Of course, when they restart and, 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 and read the, the, the log again, you, you can see this as a duplicate. Um, but um, if, if you have um, service state only in memory, um, this doesn't matter. And um, this has an important consequence on um, how you uh, write business and application logic. When you compare this to um, at least one deli uh, message delivery mechanisms in um, Arca Persist and also in Eventuate, um, there, there's an at least once delivery trait in our persistence um, in, in eventually it, it's called confirmed delivery. So with the plain at least once uh, messaging um, delivery mechanism, you cannot rely on, uh, on a message order. So messages can arrive in any order and you can have duplicates. So this makes it, makes it much more difficult to, um, to, to write application logic, dealing with duplicates, out of order messages and so on. This is not the case um, when you um, when you um, use when, when you have an application doing event collaboration on a replicated event log. Okay, I come now to the differences on the query side. So in Acca Persistence 
it was possible to have one or more persistent views per persistent actor. So the, the, there was a rather severe limitation that a persistent view could not aggregate events from multiple um, uh, persistent actors. And um, this limitation was addressed in ACA 2.4. Here you can um, have so-called uh, um, uh, stream sources. Um, um, so a stream source, it's, it's, it's just an interface, but, but, but the underlying implementation um, um, has the possibility to aggregate events from multiple um, pers persistent actors. But this is not a generic functionality provided by ACA Persistence. Um, this requires support from the underlying storage uh, plugin uh, to do so. I'm currently not aware of a um, um, storage plugin other than uh, the LevelDB storage plugin who already provides such a functionality. But um, this is work in progress on uh, several uh, community plugins meanwhile. Um, in eventuate, the default case is that you can have um, one or more event sourced views on multiple event sourced actors that share a local event log. And this can be extended to uh, multiple locations. So you can have an event sourced view on, at one location that can aggregate events from um, multiple event sourced actors distributed or replicated um, across different locations. So, so even if they are globally replicated or distributed. Okay, this was a brief overview um, of um, how views or um, uh, stream sources can aggregate events from um, uh, persistent or event sourced actors. And finally, I want to give a brief overview of consistency in CQRS. Uh, with consistency in CQRS, I mean the consistency um, um, between write models and uh, read models. Um, the changes that you make to the um, uh, command side are asynchronously propagated to the query side in, in both ACA persistence and eventuate. So you can have only eventual consistency here. Eventual consistency itself does not say anything about um, the, um, the order um, how updates are propagated to, um, to the query side. And um, in ACA persistence, you usually, um, I say usually because it's plugin specific, uh, only have um, a, a, a defined order per persistent actor, whereas uh, eventuate um, gives you a causal consistency order um, uh, when you aggregate from uh, multiple uh, events or actors on the command side. So, looking more closely at causal consistency in eventuate, here one has to make the distinction between reading from a single event source uh, actor or event source view. Here, causal consistency is the default simply because the event stream that is consumed by an event source actor or an event source view is causally ordered. So, the, um, 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 an event source actor view can never observe uh, an effect before its cause. But the situation is different when you make um, reads at multiple event source actors or, or views. So for example, take, um, take a replicated event source actor. So you have two, two replicas. You make an update to replica one and observe the latest uh, internal state um, with the reply from the update. Then you immediately go to the other replica, make another read there. It may well be that you um, um, read an, an earlier version of um, application state from the replica, but this violates causal consistency. And um, to ensure 
that you only make causal consistent reads across multiple events or stacks of views, eventually it provides something uh, called conditional requests. I want to demonstrate this um, based, on exam um, based on an example. In this example, we update um, a write model and then later query a read model and the requirement is that the query result should include the effect that was caused by the update um, on, um, um, on the write model. Okay, how does this work? A client starts um, uh, sending a command to an event source actor. The command is validated, an event is emitted, and after it has been stored to the event log, it has now a vector timestamp um, associated, and um, this vector timestamp is uh, returns to the uh, command sender. So, and um, the same command sender um, also sends a query to the event source view, but now associates the, um, uh, the, the, the query message with the vector timestamp inside the so-called conditional request. And um, eventuate now can now detect that the vector timestamp included in the conditional request is not in the causal past of the event source view. And this causes the event source view um, to delay the request. And only after the update from location A has been propagated to location B and consumed um, and processed by the event source view, the um, included vector timestamp is now in the causal past of the event source view. And um, the query is dispatched to the event source actor so that it can be processed and uh, it can send a reply to the, um, uh, to the client. So that's, that's the basic mechanism of conditional requests. Okay, so I'm now through with the um, uh, comparison of um, ACA persistence with eventuate. Um, how much time is left? Okay, uh, just a few more slides. Um, I also want to compare um, ACA um, um, eventuate with another uh, module in, in ACA. That's, uh, that's a new module in ACA 2.4. It's called um, ACA Distributed Data, and um, it provides implementation of um, CRDDs. CRDDs are conflict-free replicated data types. These are data types. These are replicated data types that um, um, can be um, updated concurrently at, at, um, um, at multiple um, locations or places, and even if the, um, the rights are conflicting, they converge to the same uh, state at um, all locations. So there are two um, forms of um, CRDDs that are equivalent, so um, these two forms can be uh, emulated by each other, but they are um, different uh, from, uh, from a systems perspective. And ACA distributed data provides so-called um, convergent or state-based uh, CRDDs. And eventually it provides uh, so-called commu commutative or operation-based CRDDs, abbreviated as CMRDDs. So on a very high level, uh, what is the difference uh, between these two? Um, CRDDs... Um, the different uh, CRDD replicas must um, exchange messages to communicate uh, state changes. Um, so they, they, they can eventually converge to the same state at, um, at all places. And um, the information that is exchanged between state-based um, um, CRDDs is the current state. So this has the advantage if the state is rather large, um, you 
you exchange uh, rather big messages um, uh, with every state change. So for example, if the CRDD is a set con containing um, uh, thousands of elements, you always um, ha have to uh, send the whole set to, to, to all the um, replicas to um, inform others about the update. In contrast, operation-based CRDDs only uh, send um, the changes, so the, the operations. So when, when you are using set as an example, then um, the, an add operation is sent or, or remove operations are sent, so they are much smaller. Um, regarding the communication middleware, state-based CRDDs um, have the advantage that they do not need any special guarantees from this communication middleware. So this, this can be unreliable. Um, um, the, the, the messages disseminated between uh, the replicas um, can, can be resent, they can be received multiple times. And um, that's this is also the, 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 the reason why ACA distributed data um, has uh, chosen to implement state-based CRDDs because you can use the ACA cluster gossip to uh, disseminate the changes um, um, between um, the replicas. In contrast, operation-based CRDDs need a reliable underlying, uh, an underlying reliable broadcast. So an um, application of the um, uh, operations must, or must also be, be item potent. And in Eventuate, it was chosen to use operation-based CRDDs because these are the um, properties that are, um, or the, the guarantees that, um, that are fulfilled by a replicated event log. Regarding the change history, um, these are kept, um, uh, state-based CRDDs uh, keep these uh, um, changes um, internally in memory, so you need a garbage collection mechanism. Uh, in some cases it might be tricky because uh, for garbage collection you must use a, um, uh, um, a, um, a consistent cut in the history um, of the distributed system. For um, operation-based CRDDs, um, you just store the history in, a, uh, in an event log. So um, you cannot run out of memory uh, because um, it's, 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 it's persistent on, on, on disk or in, um, in a database. So both state-based CRDDs and operation-based CRDDs are um, uh, specified in a um, in the paper, a comprehensive study of convergent and commutative replicated data types. It's um, very good reading. Uh, it's also quite easy to understand. And um, and we, we we also use this uh, specification to implement operation-based CRTDs in uh, Eventuate. So ACA distributed data has roughly. 10 uh, CRDDs implemented. These are different uh, various counters, registers, sets, and maps. And um, the current implementation, they are in memory only, so they are, they are non-durable. This means when you uh, shut down the whole cluster, um, um, the, the, the state is lost. This is okay for, 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 for most applications because you use CRDDs only uh, to, 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 to track temporary state. And um, ACA distributed data also allows you to define uh, custom data types. Um, since the latest release, uh, eventuate operation-based CRDDs are no longer experimental, but uh, there are currently only four um, um, CRDDs implemented, which is a counter, a multi-value register, a last writer wins register, and then observed remove set. And um, these are durable via event sourcing. So um, here you have event sourced actors um, around um, each CRDD instance, which can be uh, sourced again from the event log if uh, the application has been shut down. And you can even take snapshots uh, of these CRDDs. So for example, when you have um, a large number of updates to a CRDD instance, um, you can take a snapshot to reduce the recovery times. 
And eventually it also provides a CRDD framework to develop new, new um, uh, CRDDs. I, I'm planning to write a blog post how to implement an observed remove shopping cart um, in the near uh, future. I hope I have time for that. So here, just a few links to the documentation from um, uh, Eventuate and uh, ACA Persistence and ACA Distributed Data. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Are there any questions? <laughs>